Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the memorial of blowing of trumpets. And today is September the 7th in the year 2021. So, of course, the subject is, when is the memorial of blowing of trumpets? Now, if you've been paying attention to our channel all year long, you know the answer to this. But for those who are just tuning in, trying to find out when the memorial of trumpets is, let me briefly go over some of the points that we've covered in several videos. Now, I'll give you a link at the end of the video for more detailed information, but we really want to get through this as quickly as possible. I mean, if you are watching this video, you probably already know the problems of the calendar, but I'm just going to give you a few details so that you can speak intelligently when you're trying to explain to others that the Jewish calendar is off in the year 2021 and people are celebrating the feast days a month too early. Now, like I said, I want to be real brief with this. So I'm going to briefly show you this page over here. This is worldslastchance.com. It's talking about Constantine the first and Hillel the second. These are two individuals back there doing the Council of Nicaea in about 312. They came up with the idea of modifying the calendar. Now, these two individuals came up with their reasons for this modification for different reasons. Constantine, of course, wanted to erase the Passover from the calendar and replace it with Easter. And Hillel wanted to save his life as he was being persecuted by Constantine and the rest of the Roman Empire as they tried to stamp out the sacred calendar. And for the most part, it seems as though Constantine was successful because what Hillel II did in order to preserve his life and the rest of the Sanhedrin was he went in and modified the biblical calendar. In other words, the calendar, the sacred calendar that had been in use up until about that time was then modified by Hillel II under persecution from Constantine. And if you want to know what the modification was, is that he combined some information from the sacred calendar with what we know about the 19 year Matonic cycle. And he created what we know today as the Jewish calendar. Now, this should help you understand that word Jewish because this calendar, just like the people, is similar to the real Jews, but they're not Jews, just like this calendar is not a sacred calendar. It is like the sacred calendar, therefore we call it a Jewish calendar. It has a lot of points similar to the sacred calendar. That's why for many years the Jewish calendar and the sacred calendar will match as far as which months the feast days fall in. But the evidence of the modification that Hillel II created is evident in years like 2021 when the feast days are off by a month. Now, this may be why the book of Revelation, when referring to the so-called Jews, calls them the synagogue of Satan. That all makes sense when you think about how many people are following this Jewish calendar, which in some years will actually lead them astray. Now, to understand the significance of that modification, we have to understand that the sacred calendar actually has 364 days in it. Not 365, but this calendar has 364 days in it. And we read about that over in the book of Enoch, which is the only scripture that we have that describes this calendar. That's why some of you have never heard of the book of Enoch and or the book of Jubilees that we're going to talk about. It is because this book describing the way the sacred calendar works would have interfered with Constantine's and Hillel II's plan of actually modifying the calendar. I mean, how could they modify or change the calendar if you had in your possession the scripture that told you how the calendar is supposed to work? This is why these books are today considered hidden books. They were hidden so that the facts of the calendar would also be hidden. And you hear about this 364 day calendar in the book of Enoch in about chapter 74, where it talks about the 364 days in conjunction with the so-called four days of remembrance. This again is how the sacred calendar works. You have four seasons, each with 90 days in it, 
but you also have at the end of these four seasons an additional day that's added so you have four additional days this is the error that people make when they say that the calendar has 360 days in it. They are not including these four additional seasonal days, these days of remembrance. That is what Enoch is talking about when he says that men greatly err when it comes to the calendar and leaving out these four days. Leaving out these four days is actually getting mankind in trouble. When you look over here in the book of Jubilees in chapter 6, you can see how some of this trouble would go by forgetting these days. Verse 32 says, And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year. So you see here that this is an instruction, a command to actually keep these 364 days. It goes on to say, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. And it goes on to say, by neglecting these 364 days, these feast days would be disturbed, and we see proof of this scripture being fulfilled here in the year 2021 as the Jewish community is celebrating the feast days a month too early. These feast days are extremely important when you consider Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9, where it's talking about the 144,000 and that great multitude that no man can number. One thing you see that these people have in common is that they stood before the lamb clothed in white garments and they had palm branches in their hands. Now, of course, the white garment refers to baptism. Of course, baptism cleans our slate of all previous sins. But since we are human and will make errors from time to time, our father in his infinite wisdom gave us Passover to re-cleanse our spiritual tabernacle every year. And we see the palm branches in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 40 when it's talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. It is during that time that we walk around with these palm branches singing songs as a glorious festival that we know as Tabernacles. So all of that to say that anybody who wants to see the kingdom of heaven will have to keep these feast days. Well, we learned over in the book of Jubilees that you have to keep the Enoch calendar if you want to get these feast days correct. Or just like in the year 2021, you'll stand the chance of celebrating them in the wrong month or not celebrating them at all. Jubilees goes on to say that you'll end up celebrating Christmas and Easter if you continue to neglect these 364 days. And I believe we see empirical evidence of those scriptures being fulfilled as well. Now, coming back over to the book of Enoch in chapter 71, which is where we start to get the detail of the sacred calendar. And like I said, I've covered this in many videos. So let me just point out a few facts that will help you understand the 364 day calendar. Now, first of all, understand that the calendar is in three parts. You have the sun, the moon and the stars that all make up this calendar. Here in chapter 71, we're actually reading about the sun and the stars portion when we're hearing about these gates that the sun goes through every year. When you're looking at a sundial or a pictorial diagram of the so-called gates, it kind of looks like this, where you have the sun traveling through six gates throughout the year, touching each gate twice in a year. Well, you see back here in the book of Enoch that it says that the first month will begin when the sun is in the fourth gate. Now, in the subsequent chapters, you can read about the moon's play and all of this. But with the information in verse 11, we can quickly summarize that even though the solar year began when the sun entered the fourth gate, the actual month doesn't start until the moon actually enters that same gate. In other words, we get new months when the sun and the moon converges in each one of these gates throughout the year. Now, another verse that we should pull out is verse 13, where it's saying that in this particular gate, the days are getting the days are getting longer than the nights. This is important to understand when the year begins, because as you see here, the sun actually crosses 
this line which would represent the equator we see that the Sun actually crosses the equator twice in a year so we understand that when it crosses the equator at the head of the year the days are getting longer but when it crosses the equator the second time six months later the days are getting shorter that's what we read there in verse 26 when we're talking about the third gate so what Enoch is saying is at the beginning of the year it goes into the fourth gate and six months later it crosses the equator again back into the third gate now the key to the 364 day calendar you ask why does this calendar only have 364 days when empirical evidence shows us that the years are 365 and a quarter days it's because of what we read and understand down here in verse 42 when it's talking about the 364th day is saying that on that day the 364th day is the day in which the nights and the days become equal again this is the key to the 364th day understanding this 364th day we know that the solar year ends on March the 19th March the 19th is the day in which the nights and the days are equal and then it's on March the 20th that the days start to become longer and looking back over this information we see how long the Sun stays in each one of these gates it runs in a pattern that's 30 days 30 days then 31 days that's where we get the 90 days from 30 30 then 31 making 90 days for each one of the seasons and again that's only the Sun and the stars portion to understand the moon's portion and the complete understanding of the sacred calendar all you need to understand is that when the Sun is in this particular gate or this particular portal all you need is for the moon to rendezvous with that Sun in that portal and you will get a new month that happens every month it's like the hands on a clock where the Sun represents the hour hand and goes through each one of the 12 months in a year well the moon is on the same track but it makes its revolution every month and unlike the solar calendar it's only when the two line up perfectly that we get a new month so this is how we know what month we're in the Sun and the stars report the solar month beginning every year on or about March the 19th or March the 20th but of course we need the new moon to tell us when the sacred month starts so what Enoch has done is essentially laid out the path of the Sun with relationship to the gates and he's also described these four additional days here which are key to understanding the 364 day calendar if you remember these days of remembrance you'll never forget what month we're in on the sacred calendar is because these days of remembrance fall with the first new moon after March the 19th that will be the first day of remembrance the second day of remembrance indicating the beginning of summer and the beginning of the fourth month will begin with the new moon that falls after June the 19th and then we have another day of remembrance on the memorial blowing of trumpets that will be the new moon that follows after September the 18th and then the last day of remembrance falls around the end of Hanukkah which will be the new moon that falls after December the 18th with this little pictorial diagram you never have to worry about which month you're in ever again and that's what the book of Enoch gave us it's too bad that the so-called synagogue of Satan is rejecting this book and are now telling us that the feast days are a month too early so if you want to know how this calendar works I suggest you go over and look up the book of Enoch I'll give you a link to it in the description it's important that we have somebody that understands how this works because one day we won't have the internet to go by and we won't have the excuse that the Jewish community told us the wrong month it will be dependent on us getting the months right and it's better to start earlier than later so check the description for that book and many others and if you got anything out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but if you have any questions or concerns or statements or anything please put them down below 
Pray for us and Shalom.